the supervision guidelines. Now, we've been working our way through, you know, there's 10 requirements in the new supervision guidelines that were issued on the 23rd of March. And the fifth one I want to talk about today relates to communication channels. Now, there's so many reasons for talking about the communication channels with clients and the procedures that you have in place as an agency. Now, the licensee of the agency or the principal licensee needs to prepare and maintain written procedures. We all know that. You know, Section 31, 32, particularly 31, tells us that we've got to do that. We need to ensure that all communication during the providing of any services whilst we're under an agency agreement. So you've either listed a property, so you have an agency agreement. You've, man you've listed a property to manage uh, under an agency agreement. You've listed livestock to sell. You've listed a, um, a strata plan or a community association uh, or a community title plan uh, to manage. You're selling rural land. Whatever it is you're, you know, you're doing, then you know, you've got an agency agreement to cover that. Now, you also have to communicate with the with your vendors, with your landlords, with you know whoever it is that has given you that authority, and under whose fiduciary duty you are working, so you've got that legal right to act on the owner's behalf. Fantastic. Okay, if you've got your communication channels right, there's a really good practical reason for having good communication channels, knowing. You know, if there are two people on title and there's two people on your agency agreement, you know, are you going to have to deal with both of them every single time? Are you dealing with them via via text? Are you sending them emails? Are you picking up the phone and calling them? Are you talking to them on WeChat? Are you talking to them, you know, whatever, however you are speaking to these people or communicating with these people, clarify it at the point of doing your agency agreement. That's just good practice. Now, remember that the people, the you Property owners are not always going to tell you why they're selling, why they're moving out and renting the premises or, you know, whatever it happens to be. So you need to be really clear about, clear about who you need to seek instructions from throughout the process. Yes, there, there could be fraud involved. Yes, there could be, in, you could be in the middle of a property settlement through a divorce or, you know, a, a relationship breakdown. So, you know, they might be sitting there, you might not know all of the background information but please clarify how you are getting your information and who you are getting that from. So, you know, yes, you keep those contact details on file, you put them onto your agency agreement, and you've obviously confirmed that they belong to that party. So good stuff. Now, if somebody on that agency agreement requests that you change one of the details, now this is really relevant in um, property management, where, you know, there's a, there's a request from one of the parties or, or the party to change bank account details. Now, for fraud purposes, you know, somebody has, you know, hacked into their uh, uh, their email account and sent you an email. You know, I can give you the names of numerous agents who've been caught on this one in terms of cybercrime in the middle of a divorce or a property settlement situation, you know, where one party says that, no, 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 just change the bank account details and the other party doesn't even know that, you know, they're now not getting access to any of the funds from the, the rentals to that property, be it residential, commercial, whatever. So really important there, really important in terms of the same as sales, but it's about requests for, you know, bank account changes, email addresses, phone numbers, pick up the phone and confirm the request. Now, you've taken, remember, another part of the supervision guidelines is your fraud prevention issues. Now, which means you have taken four points of identification of the owners of that property. You've taken photo ID, you've taken ID, you know, you've taken a Medicare card or a credit card. You've at least cited it. You've, you know, taken a whole lot of information about these people. You've got evidence that they own the property. You've got a rate notice or you've got a, uh, the, you know, a copy of the certificate of title. You've got something telling you if it's a brand new purchase, you've got the front cover of the uh of the contract, uh, the, the signed front copy of the contract. You know, so, you know, it's it's really important there that you, you go back to that information, check who you should be dealing with, check who you are dealing with, and honestly, use your technology. You've got a phone, you can go FaceTime, you can go Messenger, you can go Skype, you can go go to meeting zoom you name it there's a six <laughs> there's hundreds of different options you can you can use to uh, get in touch with people and actually do some eye to eye doesn't matter where they are in the world covid doesn't affect this and thank goodness it's one thing that it doesn't affect and you can actually get on with making sure your communication channel is accurate 
and there's no fraud or there's no cybercrime being conducted throughout this process. So guys, be careful. That is one of the requirements under the supervision guidelines. You need to have written procedures to ensure how you do this. And that, again, is part of your supervision guidelines. So, and yes, remembering that what I talked about before is that we now, you know, yes, start putting it in place, getting your documents together, you know, and we've uh, our, our period for making sure we've got all that right is now extended through to the 1st of April.